If you ask someone to close their eyes and picture the state of Alabama, more times than not, they'll conjure an image like this. Or this. Or sometimes even this. But people forget that the Appalachian Mountains begin in Alabama. In the northern half of the state, you will find incredible waterfalls, vast forests, breathtaking mountain vistas. So let's take a look at Alabama's epic Appalachian hikes. I'm your host, Stu Donald. Let's head to the Delta. Lookout Mountain in Chattanooga is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the eastern United States, with such famous destinations as Rock City, Ruby Falls, and the Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. It is a place rich in Native American lore as well as colonial and Civil War history. But this precipice above the city of Chattanooga is literally and figuratively just the tip of the mountain. This region stretches 90 plus miles from Chattanooga south to Gadsden, Alabama, with only three miles actually being in the state of Tennessee. Roughly 35 miles lies in Georgia, with the remaining 52 miles falling in Alabama. Lookout Mountain is in one of the most biologically diverse and critically imperiled eco-regions in the world. As much as I love the beaches of Gulf Shores and Orange Beach and all of the majesty that is the Mobile Tensaw Delta, Lookout Mountain is probably my favorite part of the entire state of Alabama. So we're going to begin today's episode on the northernmost point of the trip at DeSoto Falls. We're going to head down to Little River Canyon and finally we'll stop off in Gadsden to take a look at Nakalula Falls. We began our trip at DeSoto State Park where we hung our hammocks for the night. DeSoto State Park features improved and primitive campgrounds with campsites located in a wooded mountainous setting. Backpacking campsites are also an option as well. DeSoto State Park's improved campground has a total of 94 full hookup sites with two comfort stations centrally located to have restrooms, showers, and coin-operated laundry. Each site can accommodate any size of large camping units. Tents are welcome in the back end sites. Picnic tables and grills are located at each. Continuing in the rustic tradition of the Civilian Conservation Corps, or the CCC, mountainous DeSoto State Park is nestled atop beautiful Lookout Mountain in the northeast corner of the state of Alabama. Accented by many rushing waterfalls and fragrant wildflowers that will simply take your breath away. Developed in the late 1930s, the hardworking and dedicated men of the CCC made many natural enhancements to the park that have withstood the test of time and will last for future generations. Every time I visit DeSoto Falls, I, I look up at these houses here and, and I can't help but think, how incredible would it be to have this as your backyard? After exploring the short trail next to DeSoto Falls, it was time we headed south further down the mountain to see what else Mother Nature has in store. We parked at the JSU Little River Canyon Center. For more information on Little River Canyon National Preserve or to view a movie about the Canyon Center and National Preserve, visit the Little River Canyon Center which is owned and operated by Jacksonville State University. The front desk is staffed by National Park Service staff, volunteers, and Jacksonville State University staff. A short hike soon brought us to the Highway 35 bridge that spans the Little River. Below the bridge is a wonderful park with trails and boardwalks that allow you to experience Little River Falls from virtually any angle. The falls are stunning and you can feel the power of this 45-foot waterfall.
As the most popular feature of Little River Canyon National Preserve, Little River Falls demonstrates the power of water, with Little River carving its way through the sandstone bedrock and creating this beautiful canyon surrounding it. The flow of the falls varies with the season. Summer and fall find the river low, exposing the picturesque sandstone beneath while leaving pools of water perfect for wading in above the falls and a wonderful swimming hole below the falls. Winter and spring rains bring the waterfall to its full, dangerous glory. Access to Little River Falls can be found from the paved parking lot on the west side of the Highway 35 bridge. An ADA accessible boardwalk leads visitors to a close view of the falls. With its proximity to the highway and ample parking, this place is usually very busy and today was no different. However, most people choose to drive, not hike the rim, so we set out on foot to avoid the crowds and to experience the canyon up close and personal. So that's why they called it a little river. We followed the rim trail and took in all of the breathtaking views to be found there. But we were also careful to notice the small things, like one of the oldest life forms on planet Earth, lichen. Also, no visit to the mountains is complete without a little squatching. Every trip to the canyon always brings something new and wondrous to observe. But at some point, I always find myself teetering on this parapet, contemplating the universe. And with that done, it's time to head south to Gadsden and visit Nakalula Falls. Lookout Mountain's southernmost terminus is the town of Gadsden, Alabama a quaint if not old-fashioned small southern city that is famous for its beautiful waterfall, Nakalula Falls. Here's the story of that waterfall. Originally known as Black Creek Falls, the legend of Nakalula, as written by Matilda Bilbro, says that long ago on a mountain summit within sight and sound of a rushing waterfall lived a great Indian chief whose young daughter, Nakalula, was famed far and wide for her beauty and loveliness of character. Many gallant braves lobbied the old chief for the hand of Nakalula, but only one was favored by the girl's father, a rich chief of a powerful neighboring tribe who had much to offer in exchange, wampum, horses, and blankets. Nakalula pleaded that her heart was already given to a young brave from her own tribe. This young warrior, though noted for his skill and valor, possessed little in worldly goods. The old chief refused to listen and ordered his daughter to make ready for the marriage he had arranged. What was a maiden's silly fancy compared to many horses, much wampum, and union with another strong tribe? The girl's lover was driven for the tribe, and a marriage arrangement was made with the neighboring chief. The wedding day came and a great feast was prepared. In silence, Nakalula allowed herself to be arrayed in festive wedding robes. But overcome with grief, she quietly slipped away from the merrymakers during the festivities as the soft, rhythmic rush of waters called to her. For a moment, she stood poised upon the brink of the yawning chasm. One leap, and she took the step that ended her life, depriving not only her husband and greedy father, but her lover of any hope of stealing her away, her community of all she had to offer, and herself of all that could have been. Heartbroken, the remorseful father gave the cascade his daughter's name. Since that day, the waterfall has been called Nakalula. 
Stories like this are common throughout most of the United States of America, and with few exceptions, they are all complete rubbish. This is a very European story, and likely was a story told back in the old world and reconfigured to fit the new. A few final recommendations. For the post-hike meal, I recommend the town of Mentone, Alabama, which has three chef-driven farm-to-table restaurants, including the one we tried, which was Sunflower Cafe. And why not visit the town of Fort Payne, Alabama, home of the country supergroup Alabama. Recently, I was trying to clean out my hard drive, and I stumbled upon a folder full of pictures and videos from a trip I took to the beautiful Sipsy Wilderness, which is in the Bankhead National Forest in North Alabama. I decided, why not make it an episode? One of the treasures I found in this folder were these clips of me hiking with my dearly departed Yorkie, Miss Bug. My sweet little baby was about 10 years old when this video was taken, and this was about a month before I adopted Luke. As I mentioned earlier, the Sipsi Wilderness lies within the Bankhead National Forest around the Sipsi Fork of the Black Warrior River in northwestern Alabama. Designated in 1975 and expanded in 1988, 24,922 acre Sipsi is the largest and most frequently visited wilderness area in Alabama and contains dozens of waterfalls. Somehow it got the nickname land of a thousand waterfalls. Well today, we're on the lookout for one. Soul of a wolf. The William B. Bankhead National Forest is one of Alabama's four national forests. It covers 181,230 acres. It is home of Alabama's only national wild and scenic river, the Sipsy Fork. It is located in northwestern Alabama around the town of Double Spring. Alabama's national forests have numerous attractions and recreation sites to help you connect to nature. These perfect backdrops have something for everyone. Now, understanding the regulations and rules before making a trip can result in a wonderful outdoor experience. So download the Alabama Great Escape mobile app. Our destination on our hike today was Coal Mine Falls. The trail was a simple 0.7 mile out and back trail, and it's located near Addison, Alabama. It's generally considered an easy route. It takes an average of 19 minutes to complete. The trail is great for hiking, running, and walking, and it's unlikely you'll encounter many other people while exploring. 
I have been unable to find an official height for Coal Mine Falls, but some online estimates I saw were around 20 to 25 feet. And depending on the time of year, it can be completely dried up, a beautiful stream like you see today, or a roaring cascade. We also stopped by Brushy Lake. The Brushy Lake Recreation Area offers everything from camping, picnicking, boating, and fishing to sanitary facilities, including a bathhouse. Brushy Lake is 33 acres and it has 13 campsites that accommodate very small recreational vehicles and tents. Campers occupy sites on a first come, first serve basis. Water and flushing is only available March through November. The uh, price for camping is $5 per night, $3 per vehicle on a day use. As you can see, Brushy Lake is beautiful. Now there are no amenities, but it's a great escape. It's basically boondock camping, except you do have a camp pad. It's very quiet, but you have to understand you are close to hunting areas and different times of the year when something's in season, you may hear people shooting. So don't be alarmed by gunshots. Also, they say that there's a family of five Sasquatch that live within the Bankhead Forest. Fishing is allowed in Brushy Lake, but make sure you have a valid Alabama fishing license. On the way out of the park, we passed a pioneer cemetery. Some of the people buried in this cemetery helped build this country. I have waxed poetic before about the sanctity of the post hike meal. I've also mentioned that when you're in North Alabama, there's this thing called the North Alabama Barbecue Trail. Well, today, these two worlds collided. If you download a free copy of the 100 dishes in Alabama you should eat before you die, link down below, you will find Lawler's Stuffed Barbecue Potato. Here, let them tell you more about it. Lawler's Barbecue started in 1978 in a sleepy little town in Tennessee called Pulaski. It originally started with Jerry and Philip, the two Lawler brothers. Now the interesting thing, in our logo we've got a, two big L's and we do that on purpose and it was kind of for, one was for Jerry and one was for Philip. I've been in the barbecue business since about 1981. 
It was 1999 and uh, Philip and Jerry had decided that it was time to, to grow the business and so that's where I came in. So it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. All of our stores are, are filled with uh, old fishing decor, rustic looking uh, outdoorsy because the partners, all three of us, we surround ourselves with the things we love. We know a whole lot about fishing and a whole lot about barbecue. Those are the loves of our lives. Our stuffy potatoes, they come from the valley of the jolly ho, 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 big tater. They are huge. We have ham, our pulled pork, and we have smoked turkey. We stuff them with sour cream and butter and, and good old shredded cheese. And then we put the meat all in there, and then we put a little more cheese on there, and then we put some chives on there, and then we kind of push them all down and let it all melt and just kind of get all gooey. And my goodness, it's just the absolute best that we can possibly do. Today we're having an out of Delta experience, you might say. We are on Mount Cheeha, the highest point in the state of Alabama. Uh, we are approximately four and a half hours from the Mobile Tensaw River Delta, but the town Mount Cheeha is located in Delta, Alabama. So technically we're still dealing with the Delta here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, from time to time, I'm gonna have these out of Delta experiences. I did one recently on Dolphin Island at Cedar Point Pier. This is another one. There's just, there's so much nature in this part of the uh, South that I really wanna explore it and show it off when I can. And the leaves are changing. It's the perfect time to be at Cheeha. So I thought I would come up here and let old Luke experience his first ever waterfall. So we're gonna hike uh, Cheeha Falls. Uh, he's also going to visit the highest point and he's going to be able to look out over the valley for the first time in his little doggy life. So uh, let's head for the, the, let's head for the mountain. Well, up there is our destination. To the left. The Chiaha Wilderness Area has so much to offer. Surrounded completely by the Talladega National Forest, 
Cheehaw State Park is ideal for access to the Kentucky ORV ATV Trail. Guests may also purchase day passes for USFS Talladega National Forest Recreation Areas and the ARV ATV Trail from the Cheehaw Mountain Store. The park is home to the Cheehaw Trailhead of the Pinhody Trail, which connects with the Appalachian Trail and accesses the Odom Scott Trail and the Chinaby Silent Trail. Rock climbing and rappelling is a unifying activity complete with challenge, commitment, camaraderie, and personal success. A great activity for groups or individuals, rock climbing and rappelling groups seek the adventure of rock gardens and pulpit rock trail each year. Chiha State Park requires each person to sign a waiver at the mountain store as they enter the park. Chiha State Park does not provide equipment or instructors. This area requires trained and professional guides for rock climbing and rappelling. Day use fee will apply. Geocaching is one of the fastest growing outdoor activities. It is a worldwide game of hiding and seeking treasure. A geocacher can place a geocache anywhere in the world, pinpoint its location using GPS technology, and then share that geocache's existence and location online at www.geocaching.com. Anyone with a GPS receiver can then try to locate the geocache. For other geocaches in the Delta, Alabama area, use the zip code search. Mount Chihaw, <laughs> it's a special place. I spoke with one of the uh, park rangers at the trail store, and I just remarked to her, this must be a pretty cool job, and, and she stopped a moment, and the look on her face was very earnest, and she said, this mountain's very special to me. Yes, this is a very cool job. <laughs> I bet it is. It is one of my favorite places in the state. It is, well, you know, it's the highest point in the state. And you know, we're lucky, we're blessed in the state of Alabama because we have the beautiful coastline, uh, 75 miles of beaches or so, and at the tip down there, we've got also the delta that I tell you about that is so incredible. But in the northern half of the state, you get into the Appalachians. Penholty Trail, 
uh, runs right through Mount Cheeha. It connects up with the Appalachian Trail. And from there, you can go all the way to Canada if you want to. There has even been some talk of adding that stretch of Penholte onto the Appalachian Trail so that the AT actually goes through Alabama. It is just breathtaking here. The, the views over the valley, and you can see all these little towns. Yeah, the ranger was right. This mountain is special. Having made our way to the top of the falls, I decided to pull my pack off and bust out a little breakfast for the two of us. Got a bowl full of kibble for Luke and a couple of granola bars for the hairless monkey. With our hunger sated, it's time to make our way down the ravine and check out things at the bottom of the falls. Just look at these granite walls. We don't have anything like this in the south end of the state, and I just am mesmerized by this kind of landscape. It's truly majestic.
cannot tell you how many times I have ventured out to a place like this that's beautiful and secluded, and I thought to myself, why didn't I bring a rod and reel? Well, I didn't make that mistake this time. I was only able to make a few casts before some hikers coming up from the south headed into the area. I thought, I've had this beautiful place to myself for the last half hour. Why don't I turn it over and, and let them have it to themselves? Besides, Luke and I have a lot more adventures ahead of us today. Just go ahead and hit that like button. At least that way you'll know you've watched this one already. Hit subscribe too while you're at it because it's fun to tap things. Just try it. A little tippity tap. Just go ahead and hit that like button. Hey Delta, what kind of word is Chiha? Named by the Native American Creek Nation in Muscogee language, Chiha means high place. Over the years, the name has been anglicized to Chiha or sometimes even Chiha. Hey Delta, did you know hike is actually an acronym for having in the woods kind of experience? Bless your heart. You're a little special, aren't you, Sugar? And now, the conclusion of Scaling Mount Chiha. In addition to the lodge rooms, rock cabins, and A-frame chalets, Chiha offers improved camping in the park, primitive camping near the highest point, and CCC Primitive Camping near Chiha Lake. Groups enjoy Chiha's historic CCC Bald Rock Lodge, which has 12 bedrooms and baths, with beautiful grand hall for retreats, weddings, family reunions, meetings, and more.
take a swim and cool down in Chiha Lake. Surround yourself in its cold mountain water. Relax on the beach and watch the kids have fun in the sun. This six acre lake was created by the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC. The kids will enjoy the playground, beach, diving platform, fishing with valid Alabama fishing license, hiking trails, and so much more. Guests must provide their own beach towels. Families can enjoy picnics, fishing, sunning, swimming, and hiking. A day use admission fee is charged to enter the park. Alabama law requires that all eligible anglers 16 years of age and older have in their possession a valid state of Alabama fishing license. Due to the size of our lake, we only allow hand-launched boats and electric motors. The Chiha Wilderness Area has so much to offer. Surrounded completely by the Talladega National Forest, Chiha State Park is ideal for access to the Kentucky ORV ATV Trail. Guests may also purchase day passes for USFS Talladega National Forest Recreation Areas and the ARV ATV Trail from the Chiha Mountain Store. The park is home to the Chiha Trailhead of the Pinhoti Trail, which connects the Appalachian Trail and access to the Odium Scott Trail and the Chinnabee Silent Trail. Rock climbing and rappelling is a unifying activity complete with challenge, commitment, camaraderie, and personal success. A great activity for groups or individuals, rock climbing and rappelling groups seek the adventure of rock gardens and pulpit rock trail each year. The State Park requires each person to sign a waiver at the Mountain Store as they enter the park. Chiha State Park does not provide equipment or instructors. This area requires trained and professional guides for rock climbing and rappelling. Day use fee will apply. Discover the beauty of the highest point in Alabama on an island in the sky. 
Chiha Resort State Park, which is located on the southernmost tip of the Appalachian Mountain chain, is the oldest park in Alabama, established in 1933, and is considered by many to be one of the most unique parks in the nation. Imagine 2,799 acres of granite boulders and wind-warped ancient trees at 2,407 feet above sea level, often above the clouds, and surrounded by 392,567 acres of the Talladega National Forest, including 7,245 acres of Chiha Wilderness. The trek from the parking lot to the overlook at Bald Rock is aided by this wonderful boardwalk. However, if you're the rough and tumble mountain folk type like Luke and I, you're going to want to take the primitive trail. Chiha State Park seems to be far removed from civilization. However, this park is only 30 minutes or so away from several historic downtowns like Oxford, Heflin, Anniston, Talladega, Linville, Munford, and Ashland. They are packed with shopping, dining, cultural arts, and recreational opportunities. There are three main routes to lead to Chiha State Park. The park recommends traveling on the Talladega Scenic Drive, Highway 281, which is well maintained, wide, and easily driven by large recreational vehicles. Alabama Highway 49 is also a great route and it connects with Alabama Highway 281. The scenic road less traveled is Chiha Road, or County Road 42, from Mumford, Alabama, which winds its way through the Talladega National Forest with curves, roadside brambles, and uneven asphalt. Chiha Road is a picturesque route through the forest, however, since it is not a refined road, the park does not recommend it for large recreational vehicles.
From this point forward, no more words are needed. As I mentioned earlier, before leaving the park, we stopped by the park store so that I could take care of some very important business. This was old Luke's first park, and he needed to get a medallion put on his hiking list. The first of many to come, I am sure. Now maybe it's because I'm a chef, but I have always thought that whenever you travel, you should try to avoid eating at any large chain restaurant. I mean, the whole point in traveling is to experience new things and places and culture and food. I always try and eat at some locally or regionally based restaurant. That includes when I only have time to get a drive through Now, I could go to any one of the usual suspects, but I chose to eat at the locally owned Jack's. And I encourage you to do that whenever you travel as well. So how was it? Well, it was way better than anything some clown can throw at you through a window. As I have stated many times before, there is no tradition more sacred than the post-hike meal. So when Luke and I came off the mountain today, we headed for the first barbecue joint that was open. And that took us to the town of Talladega. The place that was open was Campbell's Barbecue. And it was absolutely what I was looking for. Just a little shack on the side of the road. You walk up, order it, they hand it to you through a window you're off on your way. I ended up going to a Veterans Memorial Park that's like three blocks away. It was fantastic. Pulled pork sandwich was just off the charts good. It's one of the best pulled pork sandwiches I've ever had. But that's the thing about the post hike meal. You burn so many calories, you've been out in nature where your senses are heightened, you're just more perceptive. No matter what you get at your post hike meal, it's liable to be the best example of that you've ever had in your life. Now the great thing about North Alabama is they have this incredible barbecue. The state even has erected a North Alabama barbecue trail. I will make sure to include a link to that in the description below. Luke the dog here coming at you, asking you to please remember to click the like and subscribe. Ooh, ooh, squirrel! I, I'll be back. <laughs>